Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Arnold Toynbee, the English historian, said that the spirit of civilization is religion. It's the ruh that animates civilization. And if you take religion out of any civilization, then it's hell-bent for destruction. It's hell-bent for destruction. It's headed for destruction. And super- We saw a sign today on the way here. It said, play, work soft, play hard. It was an advertisement. This is what Shaitan telling these people. Work soft and play hard. This is what they're doing. They're reduced. Today, the, the newspaper, the ma- major story was the Super Bowl. Yeah. Front page, major story. And in the back, in the business section, Greenspan said, we're in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> this is bread and circus of the Romans. Absolutely. It's bread and circus. Give them bread and give them circus. And whenever things got hard for the Roman politicians, what did they do? They gave them more bread and more circus. This is what they do in Ramadan now in the Muslim countries. They say the best television programs are in Ramadan. Well, that's because the Iblis is behind the programming. And that's why they call it programming. Because you're being programmed. And he's the programmer. He's behind it all. They had a cartoon in an American newspaper of a guy opening a door that said tech support and he opens it and it was hell and there was the devil behind the computer with all the wires coming down there and it said now I understand the internet (laughs) I mean even their cartoonists can see it and cartoonists in this country are the only people that are allowed to say the truth the only real news in the newspapers is in the cartoons because they're the court jesters Court jesters were characters that were allowed to say the truth to the king because they were considered fools. And this is why the cartoon, they'll tell the truth in the cartoons. Really, Trudeau and all these characters and Tom Tomorrow. These guys are the, Tom Tomorrow, if you want real news, just read Tom Tomorrow. He's the only serious news analyst in America as far as I'm concerned. And he's a cartoonist. I'm not making that up, I'm really serious. These people, look at the, we have the solution to the, to the crisis of this country. And we should want to salvage this country. There's no reason why we should want to see this country destroyed. There's all these Muslims, and, and, and it's troubling for me because I'm living here, but they're all saying, Allahumma dammar America, Allahumma shattid shamlahum, Allahumma armil nisa'ahum, Allahumma armil nisa'ahum, Allahumma yattim awladahum. I mean, I'm hearing it in the message, and I'm thinking, man. I had a Mauritanian sheikh, I was in the middle of the desert, and he was saying, Allahumma asqit ta'iratihim min as-sama'i. And I said, Ya sheikh, ana arkab ala tibka ta'irat. I ride on those planes. He said, ma'u, ma'u valik, ma'ya suluka. That, it's not going to, if you're on the plane, it's okay. <laughs> Seriously, we have to, we have to realize, we've got things to do here. You know, when I was in, I was recently in, in Arabia. And there was a, a deaf person came into the room, and there was a person there, and I started talking to him through this interpreter. And, I, and he said, where's he from? And he said, he said uh, Sheikh Abdullah Qaz said he's from America. So he went like this. And I said, what was that? <laughs> and he said, that's America. In Arabic, sign language. I said, what does that mean? He said, you know, cowboys, like shoot them. <laughs> And <laughs> that's America. If you want to sign for America to a deaf Arab, you say, we want to change that. Really, these people need to get that chance. I said, well, how do you say English? And he said, and I said, why? He said, because of BBC, they're always talking. And then he asked me where I was going. I said, first, and then... <laughs> But that's, that really bothered me. That he, that's what he said. That's America. Shoot them up. Bang, bang. That's what they do. Just go in, nuke them. That's a good American phrase. We ought to nuke the whole lot of them. Those sand Arabs. We ought to nuke them. Ragheads. They developed the neutron bomb for the, for the Arabian Peninsula. People really, I'm not making that, they developed the neutron bomb. Because the neutron bomb kills all the people and leaves the oil refineries standing. It was designed to solve the problem of not destroying the infrastructure. So you can kill all the people 
and you can still wait a little while until all that nuclear fallout dissipates and then you go in and get your oil. What is that? This is a sickness of the mind. Their children, our children, their children, our children, a lot of Muslim children are watching daily television, violence on TV. It's haram in Sharia to watch a person being killed. It's haram to watch that. Unless it's for the hudud. And there a group of believers are supposed to watch it as a deterrent. But it is actually haram to go and see things like that. To watch torture, any of these type things. This is desensitization. In this country now, we have daily acts of, of violence that we can't understand anymore. They don't even have a frame of reference. They have a, a, a Lieutenant Colonel, Dave Grossman, who wrote a book called On Killing. And it's worth reading this because he, he's written some very important material. This man taught the psychology of killing at West Point. And he said basically what they're doing now in videos is they are training children to become assassins because the army uses the exact same desensitization techniques for training assassins in the army. The same technique. They have policemen. You want to know why Ahmed Diallo was killed? You go look how they train the policemen. They train them on video games. Do people know that? They train them on video games. They don't... See, it used to be in the old days, uh, they didn't train people to, to react. They trained them to think. Because that's what you want. You wanted a policeman who, who thought before he acted. Like Harrab. The idea of thinking before you act. Because to kill a human being is not a simple thing. And anybody who's ever done it, and there might be somebody in this room who's done it. Anybody who, who's ever killed a human being knows what that means. I met a man who was a, a, an assassin in Vietnam. He became Muslim. And he told me that he was trained to kill people only when he saw their faces. He blew their heads off. And I asked him, he killed many people. He, and I asked him once, I said, do you ever see those faces? He said, every night. Every night. This, this, what's happening out here? We had, do, do, do people know who Brian Wilson is? Not the beach boy. Do people know who Brian Wilson is? He's a Vietnam vet who started an organization, an anti-war organization. He lost his legs because he, he laid on tracks for a, 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 a train that was taking military hardware that would be taken to Nicaragua to kill Sandinistas. He put his body on the tracks and because the FBI warned the conductor about terrorists there, the conductor ran over this man's legs and cut his legs off. He lectures now. The man who was assigned by the FBI to watch this man actually ended up quitting the FBI and joining this man's organization. And they lectured together. This ex-FBI agent and this ex-Vietnam vet. What this Vietnam veteran said was his job in Vietnam was to assess the successful bombing missions. What that meant was he had to go into villages and see what the death count was because that's how successful the bombing mission was, how many people were killed. And when he came back to this country, he became a lawyer, and for 10 years he said he never talked about what he saw, but he lived with it every single night. He lived with it every single night of his life. And then he became a counselor to Vietnam veterans in Boston. And he began, every time that he would counsel these vets, they would end up basically just crying together. I know a man who drives a taxi in the Bay Area who told me every night he drives home Vietnam veterans in this country who weep after getting drunk in a bar. And they say, do you know what we did? There have been more Vietnam veterans have killed themselves then soldiers died on the American sides fighting in Vietnam. Suicide rates. You think it's easy to go and tyrannize people? You think that's an easy thing to be an oppressor? It's not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing. They suffer. And that's why we have to give victory to the oppressed and to the oppressor. 
And the way we give victory to the oppressor is to stop him from his oppression. And that's our role in this country. And if we're silent about it, then we're cowards. And that's what we are. And if you're not willing to speak out for the truth and take the consequences, then you're in the wrong religion. Because that's what this religion is about. It's about standing up for the truth. And the greatest shaheed is the one who speaks the truth in front of unjust authority. It's not the one who goes out and kills a bunch of people. It's the one who speaks the truth in the face of unjust authority. That's what the shaheed is. In this deen, that is the highest shahada. Kerimat al-haq and the sultan in jail. And we need to speak the truth because we're still living in a country where you're permitted to speak the truth. You're permitted. They will do things, and we know that, but that's not our concern. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wali alladheena amanu. We're not here to blow up anything. I'm in this country, mustaqman. I'm in this country, I'm not here to blow up anything. I'm not here to kill anybody. I'm not here to subvert anything other than the dominant paradigm. That's all I'm interested in subverting. I'm interested in subverting kufa. And that's what we're here to do. If you want to do something else, then you make hijrah from this country. You make hijrah from this country and you go to another place. But as long as you're in this country, your job in this country is to spread peace and spread the truth. When the Messenger of God وسلم, went to Medina, Abdullah ibn Saddam, the great Jewish rabbi who became Muslim, went to hear the words and he said, the first words I heard from the Messenger of Allah وسلم, were, he said, the first thing he noticed, he said, مَا كَانَ وَجْهُهُ وَجْهَ كذاب. His face was not the face of a liar. And this is called firasa because the Arabs knew firasa. They knew what a good face was and a bad face. And then he sat and listened to the words and the first thing the Messenger of Allah said, Ya yuhan nas, afshu salam, O humanity, spread peace, wa at'imu ta'am, and feed food, wa sallu bin lady, wa nasu niyam, and pray in the night when people are sleeping, تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ بِالسَّلَامِ And you'll enter paradise in security and in peace. That's the message of Islam. أَفْشُوا السَّلَامِ وَأَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامِ 50% of the world's population are living below the poverty lines. They're living in slums. They're living in slums. Most people on this planet don't even have proper water to drink. We're in ni'mah. I mean, this, look, look at this ni'mah. When I was in the time, this is black. That's what color it is. And that's what people drink there. And you know what they say when they finish? Alhamdulillah. That's what they say. They say Alhamdulillah. Look at this ni'mah. How are we going to do the shukr of this ni'mah? Really, how are we going to make shukr for all this ni'mah that we're in? And this country is headed, seriously, it's getting, everything is getting faster and faster. Faster it means you're going down. That's what it is. When you're getting faster, it means you're headed down. This country is going to crash. And if you're here, you better be prepared. We better be prepared as a community to recognize this country is headed for a big crash. And if you don't think so, you haven't read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You haven't read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The British were the only power in the world in the late 19th century. They were the only power. They were the sole power in the world in the late 19th century. They feared no one. The British Empire, the sun never sets on the British Empire. Rule Britannia. Britannia rules the ra waves. Rule Brit Britannia. We'll never, never, never be slaves. That's what the English said. The sun never sets on the British Empire. Well, what they forgot was America, after the sun sets on England, it rises on America. And when there was a Libyan woman who I know went to a, a British embassy to get a, 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 a transit visa to America, he said, go get your visa from America first, and then may, we'll give you one. And she said, Meta asbahat Britannia venaban li Amerika. Since when did England become a tail for America? And see, she's an intelligent woman. Akhadatu al -ghayra. He got like, you know, jealous. So he said, okay, we'll give you one. I'm not going to let America do that. But see, that's just Amani. Britain, Britain really, what, what is England now? I mean, they're in crises. 
They're in big crack, and this country's all coming. It's all coming. And this is the sunnah of Allah in His creation. So let us change our lives now. Really, become people. We have things to do in this country. We can change the, 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 the face of this nation. We can. The Muslims can do that. We have the power to do that by, by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have the truth on our side. We have every atom, every molecule, every planet, every angel behind us. We have, it's all behind us. But we have to be ibadullah. That's what we have to be. That's the only condition to get all of creation working for us. That's the only condition. That's all creation wants to see is that we're indeed servants of Allah. And if we do that, the creation will come behind us. You will see miracles. Just as those who went before us saw miracles. They saw miracles. When Muhammad Alexander Webb, somebody asked him, Rahimahullah, somebody asked him, do you really think you can take Islam to the American people? He said, you, you talk as if this is my work. This is God's work. This isn't my work. This is not about Muhammad Alexander Webb taking Islam to America or Zaid Shakur or Siraj Wahaj or Hamza Yusuf or Fulan Wa'alan or anybody else. This is about the deen of Allah, the creator of the heavens and, and, the, and the entire universe. This is the deen of Allah, lest we forget. We are the people of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the best of creation. And if you want to know sacrifice, sacrifice, and I'll use a baseball metaphor, because the first hit I ever got in college, in, in high school baseball, and I remember it, because people remember things like that, was a sacrifice bunt. That was the first time I ever got a hit. I made a sacrifice bunt. You know what a sacrifice bunt is? That means you give up your... You get out in order to advance somebody else. And that's the spirit of this deen. We are people that we want to advance the deen, not ourselves. And if it means from time to time getting out of the way, then we get out of the way. We get out of the way. It's not about me or you or anybody else. This is the deen of Allah. And at the head of this deen is the best of creation. And that's why Zubair ibn Awam, if you want to know sacrifice, Zubair ibn Awam radiallahu once took off his shirt to change it and a man saw over 70 wounds on his body. And he said, where did you get those, those wounds from? And he said, shielding the messenger of Allah. Shielding, the, he was a human shield. Now these people here, they have to do deep brainwashing when they get these, these people to to protect the president, jump in front of the president. You know how long they brainwash them to do that? Because that is against every instinct in a human being. They do, they do behavioral conditioning to get them to do that. They train them down in Langley and other places, and they make them do all these things. When they hear boom, boom, they jump in front. They have to learn that to be conditioned like a Pavlovian dog. That's what they do. And then when they hear the shot, they just jump in front. And, and the president, and if, if the CIA's calling the hit, sometimes they'll duck a little bit, let the bullet go by. <laughs> That's what happened to Rabin, right? Rabin, they, they opened up his back. They opened it up. You can see it in the film. I saw the film. They opened up his back. Boom. And then their secret service said, it's only blanks. That's what they shouted. It's only blanks. Leah Rabin... The, the Jewish wife of Rabin said, I would rather my children marry Palestinians than some Jews. Because she knew who killed her husband. You see, that's their treachery. And that's not our deen. That's not our deen. That's another deen. But those people, that's how they have to train them, by Pavlovian conditioning. Zubair ibn Awam wasn't trained by Pavlovian conditioning. When he saw the messenger of Allah in danger, he didn't think of anything else other than getting him out of danger, even if it meant his life. Because al mafdul yakhdum al fadil like the Arabs say. The one who has less virtue is at the service of the one who has greater virtue, and that's at the basis of our deen. Aqudu qawri hadu wa astaghfirullah li wa rakum wa risa'ir al-muslimin wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.